Good morning. Jesus is good. God is good. Good morning. Wake up. Share this with your friends. Invite your followers. We're going to start in 30 seconds. Oh, but have you seen him? My beloved is dazzling. He's radiant. He's chief among 10,000. His head is like the finest gold. His leadership has been proven. I've read the book. I know the story. I trust him. And his eyes, oh, the beauty of his eyes are set on me. And he never relents from looking my way. And I know, I know his chief. Spices, his emotions toward me. Oh, look at the look on his face. Though the watchmen, watchmen, watchmen beat me and take away my veil, and though my ministry seems to crumble and, and it seems to fall down, fall down, fall down, fall down, and though the cloak of suffering is the cloak I seem to wear right now. Day three, pressing on. You see the one I love. If you see him, tell him this one thing. I am lovesick. I am not offended. Who am I to shake my fist in his face and say, you should have done it this way? Who am I? No, it's good to bear the yoke, to put my mouth to the dust. And what am I so? I love this song. This is Misty Edwards singing from the Song of Solomon. Jesus is fairer than 10,000 men. He is awesome. He is beautiful. He is lovely. There is no other God like him. Jennifer LeClaire with you here today, author of our devotional Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still, small voice of God, senior leader at the Awakening House of Prayer in South Florida founder of the Ignite Network. There's so much to do, but the most important thing we can ever do is sit at his feet. Today's devotion titled, Think About God. And here's what I heard the Lord say. What was the first thing you thought about when you woke up this morning? What was the last thing that crossed your mind before you fell asleep last night? Do you remember? We want to occupy your thoughts, says God. We want thoughts of our love for you to flood your soul as you lie down and as you rise up. We want you to meditate on the word day and night to ensure your success. We want you to talk with us, about us, with others, and share our love with them. But you have to know us first, says God. Think about us because we're thinking about you. Today's devotion, scripture references, Psalm 63, read the whole thing, Psalm 139, verse 2, and Psalm chapter 1, verse 2. 
And the prayer starter for today, I want what you want. (laughs) Help me to consider what I am thinking about so I can weed out thoughts that are not in line with your word. Remind me of scriptures that teach about your love, your mercy, and your character. I choose to meditate on you. Oh, Father, you are, you are awesome. You are meditation worthy. We choose to meditate on you. You are the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Oh, Jesus, you are almighty. You are mightier than any other might that might come against us. We thank you, Lord. You are awesome. You are powerful. You are holy. You are pure. Your heart for us is single. It's focused. It's sure. You love us with an everlasting love. We give you praise praise. We give you honor. We pour out our hearts to you this morning, God. We pour out our lives to you this morning, God. We pour out our wrong thoughts to you this morning, all the stresses, all the pressures of the world. We thank you, Lord. We're going to be overwhelmed with your goodness. We're not impressed with the devil's tactics. We're overwhelmed by your goodness. God, help us to shift our perception, shift our focus, shift our mind to where we're more aware of you than than anything else in the world, than anything else in the natural world, than anything else in the spirit world. God, increase our awareness of you. Dial it up, God. Dial it up, God. The enemy is trying to dial up with distractions. Dial up the overwhelm. Dial up the stress. Dial up the doubt. Dial up the unbelief. Dial up the all of the. Uh, dial up the depression. I just the enemy is trying to dial up negative emotions. But God, our emotions. We give you the reins to our emotions. We give you the range. We thank you. We praise you because you are good. You are mighty. You are awesome. There is no other God worthy of our focus, worthy of our attention. We will not give our ear to the God of this world, Satan. We will not give our ear to the demons that try to rout our emotions. We will not give our ear to the negative people around and about us who never have a good report. We thank you, Lord. We're going to prophesy to according to the proportion of our faith. That means we're going to prophesy good things. We're going to prophesy right outcomes. We're going to prophesy successful endeavors. We're going to prophesy what's on your heart and what's on your heart is good. Your will is good. Your will is perfect. Your will is acceptable. We're going to prophesy according to the proportion of our faith. That means we're going to prophesy good things. We're going to prophesy grand things. We're going to prophesy wild dreams. We're not going to prophesy fear. We're not going to prophesy anger. We're not going to prophesy disaster. We're not going to prophesy sickness. We're not going to prophesy these things because these things come from unbelief because you are a God of faith and your word tells us that you heal. Your word tells us that you restore. Your word tells us that you reconcile. Your word tells us that you repair. So we're not going to prophesy through the lens of unbelief. We're not going to confess what the enemy shows us in our mind's eye, in our imagination. We're going to cast down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against your knowledge. Your knowledge is in your word. Your knowledge is in your heart. Lord, reveal to us more and more and more and more of your knowledge by revelation of your Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. God, help us today. Help us today. We're pressing in. Day three, we're pressing in. We're pressing into the Holy of Holies. Oh, I thank you, Lord. There's no room for stress in the Holy of Holies. There's no room for talk toxic emotions in the holy of holies when we press in when we press all the way in those things that plague us those things that bind us those things that tie us down and wrap us up and press us those things there's no room for them they just grow strangely dim the emotion of it all just fades away in your glory oh the feelings the negative feelings they just fade away in your presence because in your presence is fullness of joy so we're making an exchange today God, we're pressing, we're pressing, we're pressing, we're pressing into the Holy of Holies. There is no sickness in the Holy of Holies. Come on, somebody. There is no depression in the Holy of Holies. There is no anger in the Holy of Holies. We're pressing, we're pressing, we're pressing. We're going to press past our flesh. We're going to press past the toxicity in our soul. All of those stressors, years and years and years and years of chronic stress, frustration, emotional 
emotional pain, hurts, wounds, baggage, trauma. We're pressing past all of those things to get to the Holy of Holies where there is no such thing there. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We're pressing. Somebody just needs to get on your face even now. Somebody just needs to get down on your face even now. Just put the phone on speaker and just get in, get on your face and cry out to God. God, remove this, this, this demonic lens from my eyes. This, this demonic veil that causes me to see you dimly. This demonic veil that causes me to see you as mad at me. This demonic veil that causes me to see everything around me as a bigger deal than it really is. We're not impressed. I'm not going to be impressed. You're not going to be impressed with the devil's distractions any longer. You're not going to be impressed anymore with the devil's power. Dear God, help us. Lord, we repent. Some of us are more impressed with the devil's power than with the power of the almighty God. Jesus, the power that raised Christ from the dead, the Holy Ghost, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, the power of the Holy Ghost that raised the Son of God from the grave dwells on the inside of us. We're not going to be impressed with the devil's power anymore. Yeah, he's got power, just the power that we give him. That's all he's got. He's got the power of the lie. He's got the power of the flattering tongue. He's got the power of deception. We're not falling for it anymore. We're not giving the devil our power. We're not giving him our power. Thank you, Jesus, that we can focus on who you are. We're not impressed with the devil's tactics. We're not impressed with the devil's smoke screens. We're not impressed with the devil's meddling any longer. We're not going to be impressed. God, just let it not even phase us. I just thank you, Lord. I just thank you, Lord. I, I just feel so many are on overload. You're on overload. You're on overload. I heard the word overload, 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 overload. I break that in Jesus name. Overload. You're on overload. You're on stress overload. You're on fatigue overload. You're on sickness overload. I just see all this overload, overload, overload. I thank you, Lord, that you overwhelm the overload by the power of your spirit today in Jesus name. Overwhelm the overload overload God I thank you we choose we choose come on it's a choice it's a choice your perceptions are a choice what you think about is a choice what you meditate on is a choice what you look at is a choice God we choose this day to look at you oh you are fairer than 10,000 men we choose today to look at you you are our beloved Lord give us doves eyes eyes only for you eyes that see what you're doing eyes that understand your heart eyes that that see your glory eyes that see through that eagles that eagles vision those who wait upon the Lord they will mount up with wings as eagles I thank you Jesus we will wait upon you 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 Jesus we will wait upon you draw us after you God draw us after you God and run with us draw us after you God draw us after your heart draw us to you God draw us by your spirit God if there's something distracting us if there's some mindset that's disturbing us God draw us after you give us an overwhelming sense of your presence of your grace of your mercy of your love I thank you Lord today I know you're gonna do it I know you're doing it even now I know Lord that you're doing it even now this toxicity 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 I just saw a picture it's like that picture that's on a box of poison you know it's like got a skull with the crossbones it's and I see another picture it's a sign of, 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 of what they put on things that are flammable they put on th as a warning they put on things that are flammable I just thank you Lord we're not drinking the devil's poison any longer we're not drinking that toxic stew of stress and poison the enemy tries to serve it up some of you get out of bed in the morning the word of the Lord this morning was what do you think about when you first woke up dear God I can hear the thoughts of some of you you thought about the stress you thought about the pain you thought about the worry you were dreading when you woke up your feet did not even touch the ground dear God your feet did not your tippy toes didn't even touch the ground didn't even touch your carpet your hardwood floors your toes did not even make contact with the ground before a thought came flooding to your mind oh no I forgot about this oh no I am dreading that oh no and some of you it was more subtle here's another day I break it I break it I break it come on break these things break these things we will not rise up in the morning with worry we will not rise up in the morning with dread we will not rise up in the morning thinking about the same disturbing thought that we went to sleep thinking about last night I break this cycle this demonic cycle of disturbing dreams this demonic cycle of terrorizing 
paralyzing thoughts, this demonic cycle of overwhelming oppression. I break it. God, let us make a shift today. Let us make a shift today. Let us make it. Let us, Jesus, help us to choose rightly. Give us wisdom. Give us wisdom. Oh, Lord, give us wisdom. Give us wisdom. Help us not to be wise in our own eyes, thinking that we can solve the world's problems when we very well know we can't solve anything apart from you. But your wisdom is available. Your wisdom shall be justified. Your wisdom, it's there, it's right there, it's right there, it's right there, it's right there within reach. Oh, shorakata. Lord, we, we, we trade the, the wondering for wisdom. We trade the worry for wisdom. We trade the what ifs for wisdom. We're asking you, Lord, to shift our minds. We're asking, we need help even. We can't even do that apart from you. We cannot even renew our minds with your word apart from your grace. We need your help. Help us, Lord, to make a shift. I just see some of you, I literally, I saw a picture. Some of you in a big boiling pot. You're stewing. You're stewing, you're stewing in your own emotions. I just see people that are, you're just stewing. You're just stewing. You're stewing in toxic emotions. You're stewing in stress. You're stewing in worry. You're stewing in unbelief. You're, you're trying to believe. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. You're just stewing. I just see a stewing. Like you're in the, we talked about this, the poison in the pot yesterday. We talked about the poison in the pot. The Lord showed us about the poison in the pot and how some of us are drinking from the poison, the, the poisonous pot instead of drinking from the well of life. I see some of you stewing. Instead of, and you're fighting. I, I see a picture. You're struggling to, not to drown in this big boiling pot that you're stewing in. You're just, you're trying to tread water. I, I see you doing like even the doggy paddle. Your, your head is just above the water and you're just trying to breathe and just, just grasp for air. Oh, Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that we're going to jump out of the stew and into the river of life this morning. Oh, the Lord was showing me something and the enemy's trying to steal it from me. I'm grabbing it. Oh, this pot of stew. You're just swimming, just treading, just treading, just treading, just treading. The Holy Ghost is your lifeguard today. Guess what? The Holy Ghost is going to get in the stew with you and pull you out because he is a deliverer. Father, pull us out of that place of stewing. Pull us out. Deliver us, Lord, from our own stewing, stewing in our own juices, as they say in the South. Lord, we don't want to stew in our own juices. We don't want to stew in our own stress. We don't want to stew in our own disappointments. We don't want to stew in our own Jesus. Would you help us? We don't want to stew in depression. We don't want to stew in anxiety. We don't want to stew in anger, in rage any longer. God, would you help us? We don't want to stew anymore in these things. We want to stew in your love. We want to be steeped in your love. Oh, Jesus, we surrender. There it is. That is that is it right there. There's a struggle in the stew. But if you surrender in the stew, I thank you, Lord. Jesus will deliver you. That's what it was. The enemy tried to steal that thought of the Holy Ghost from my mind. You're struggling in the stew. And you're like exerting so much effort to struggle, to struggle, to struggle. You're stewing and you're struggling. You feel like you're drowning in the struggle. If you'll just surrender, God will deliver you. God wants you to get to the end of yourself. We're not going to stew any longer in past pain. We're going we're to surrender it all to Jesus today. Come on. We're going to surrender it all. We're going to surrender it all. We're not struggling anymore. We're not stewing in these things. We surrender. We surrender to your love, God. We surrender to your heart, Jesus. We surrender to your wisdom. The world's way of doing things doesn't work for us. The world way of walking and living and breathing doesn't work for us. We surrender to your way. Your thoughts are higher than our thoughts, God. Your, 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 your plans for us, they're good. Your ways are higher than our ways, Jesus. They're higher. They're higher. They're higher. We thank you, Lord. We're going to take the higher way. We're not going to go the way of the world. We're not going to, to, to do it in our own strength. That's why some of you are worn out. And doctors are diagnosing you with, with, with depression and anxiety and, and diseases. I break all those word curses over your life. We surrender to you, Jesus. Lord, recalibrate our bodies, recalibrate our minds, recalibrate our will, recalibrate our emotions. Whatever we need to have recalibrated, recalibrate it. 
And the Lord would say to you today, as you continue to press into the Holy of Holies, know that I, that I am with you, that I am escorting you there, that I am showing you the way, because I'm taking you a way that you've not been before, says the Lord. You've tried to get there by your own means and by what you were taught in books, but some of the things you were taught are simply works of the flesh, and you cannot enter into the Holy, holy of Holies with works of the flesh, says the Lord. But you must follow my spirit, because I alone know the way, and I will draw you away. I will draw you near to me. I will show you how to get to places in my heart that you've never even known existed, says the Lord. So begin to surrender even now those things that plague you, those things that hurt you, those things that stress you. Surrender them to me. Cast your care, says God. Cast it. Cast your care forcibly with a violent faith. Cast the cares upon me, says the Lord, and I will exchange those cares for peace, and I will exchange those worries for wisdom, and I will exchange those things that have caused you to feel weighted down for our levity in your spirit and you will rise higher and higher and higher in my spirit and I will show you things to come even in your life and even in your family and even in your workplace and people will come to you and they will see the peace upon you says the Lord and they'll say what has happened to you <laughs> you have changed what has happened to you? You look 10 years younger. What has happened to you? People will come to you, says the Lord, and they will notice a marked difference in your countenance. They will notice a marked difference in your spirit, in your words, in your speech. They will notice a marked difference, and they will say, what has happened to you? And you will say to them boldly, I have entered into the Holy of Holies. I have encountered God in a new way, and he has lifted me up, and he has healed my body, and he has restored my soul. He has led me beside still waters, and I have walked with him in the cool of the day and you will glorify me and you will lead many into my heart you will make known to many that I am not mad at them but I love them as much as I love you and when you have been fully healed and fully restored begin to seek opportunity says the Lord to go beyond what you know and to go deeper than where you've been and understand and know that there's so much more that I want for you but you must release the toxicity of your soul. And you must begin to prophesy out of faith and not out of unbelief, says God. And I will show you. And I will teach you. I will help you if you'll just agree with my heart. I'm looking for your yes today, says the Lord. I'm looking for your yes, not your maybe not your I'll do it tomorrow. But your right now full out, total on surrender to me. I'm looking for your yes and I will escort you there into the Holy of Holies, into the holy place. I will show you how to get there because you know not which, you know not which you know, which you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. Jesus, help us, Lord. We give you the, we give you the reins of our emotions. We give you the reins of our heart. We give it all to you, God. This morning, we give it all to you. There's nothing in this world that we want more than your presence. There's nothing in this world that we need more than your presence. There's no greater awareness that we desire than the awareness of your presence. Lord, help us to de-stress, to detox. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Who was and is and is to come. We thank you, Lord, that you just, you're, you just weren't was, but you is, <laughs> you are, I am. We give you praise and honor and glory. We magnify you. We magnify you, Jesus. We magnify you. We magnify you. We will prophesy out of faith and not out of unbelief. We give you praise and honor and glory. You are worthy. You are holy. Draw us unto you. Draw us away. Take us deeper, God. We don't know how to get there, but you do. And you've given us an invitation. You've given us an invitation. You've given us an invitation, and we say yes. We are RSVPing to the Holy Spirit today. Come on. We are RSVPing. Say, so yes, we'll be there. And guess what? You don't even need to bring anything. There's nothing he needs you to bring but yourself. You can bring your pain if you want. You can bring your stress. You can bring your hurts. You can bring your worries. You can bring your fears. You can bring your rejection. 
and he'll take it away. But he doesn't need you to bring anything. He doesn't need any works. He doesn't need any striving. Help us to enter into your rest today, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just thank him. Just thank him because he's good. Just thank him because he's good. Thank you, Lord. Day three. Day three. Day three, pressing in. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. God is good. God is good. God is good. Listen, remember, we are in the 17 days of pressing into the Holy of Holies, 17 days of getting on our face and pressing, pressing, pressing into God. We're, 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 we're pressing and we're sowing. We're pressing and we're sowing. I just went by yesterday and took a trunk full of clothing and handbags and a lot of it I never even worn and just took it over to the Salvation Army. Just, I'm just sowing whatever I can sow. Just sowing whatever I can sow. Sow good deeds. Sow good works. Sow, sow, sow. We're still in the season of the abundant harvest. That was the prophetic word of the Lord for last year. The angels of abundant harvest have been released. It's time to, to wrap up the year sowing, sowing, sowing. Sow kind words, sow prayers. I have a friend, and I was telling her yesterday, you know, you're sowing so much. Just spending time helping people, sowing so much you cannot help but reap a harvest. Praise God. We want to set ourselves up for 2018. We want to sow, sow, sow. It's not just about money. You know, your time is actually more valuable than money. Did you know that? Your time is, is more valuable than money. You, can't, you can make more money. You cannot make more time. Did you know that? God created time. God created time. But we can't create it. He can redeem the time. We're called to be good stewards of our time. So, 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 so. If you want to sow a seed into this ministry, you can sow a prayer seed. Go to prayforjennifer.com. Become part of my prayer team. I need your prayers today. It's moving day. I need your prayers for a smooth move. Come on, a smooth move. Praise God. I need a smooth move. Amen. If you want to sow into this ministry, I invite you to do that. And I pray over those. I've started to pray every day while you're here just so that you know I'm praying. If you want to sow into this ministry, you can do that. We have a big vision. I've got a guy working on the 24-7 prayer stream. I just cannot put my time on it right now with the move. He's like, well, if, if it's about money, I, you know, don't worry about it. I'm like, it's not about money. I just don't have the time to do it. So you, know, so you have to be a good steward of your time if you know that if you know that you have a deadline, you have to do the things that have to get done and not do the things that you'd like to get done. There's a time for everything under heaven. Amen? Pray for a smooth move. Next week will be better time-wise. I'm in crunch time now. And so I've learned how to prioritize. But that's another lesson. That's another lesson for another day. Most people in life, 
don't know how to prioritize. Therefore, they live in a state of emergency because they didn't do what they needed to do when they should have done it. They procrastinated. Even with giving. Some of you have not sown what the Lord told you to sow all year long. Now you're in December. You've got a deadline. You need to sow what the Lord told you to sow. If he spoke to you earlier in the year about sowing a seed, you better sow it because he's trying to get something to you. Amen. If you want to sow into the ministry, you can do that at jenniferleclair.org slash donate. jenniferleclair.org slash donate. You can sow there. You can become a partner there. jenniferleclair.org slash donate. If, you want, if you're international, paypal.me slash jenniferleclair. Or if you just prefer to use PayPal, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. You can sew there. If you want to use text to give, 754-701-2161. Type text the word PRAY, P-R-A-Y, 754-701-2161. Text the word PRAY, P-R-A-Y. Thank you, Prophet Vanessa. Yep, text the word PRAY. That's not a prayer request line, by the way. Don't, don't send your prayer request there. They're, they won't be answered, and I don't want you to feel upset and disappointed. If you have prayer requests, those go to 247prayerroom.com, okay? 247prayerroom.com. That's where our intercessors pick up the prayer requests, 247prayerroom.com. Don't use the text to give. Don't use the text to give. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. If you're sending a check or a money order, I can't do what I need to do without supporters. God always raises them up. Maybe you're one of them. Always be led by the Lord in your giving. Always. Always be led by the Lord in your buying. Be led by the Lord in how you spend your money. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33300. Three, always be led by the Spirit. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Holy Spirit is never going to lead you to sin. He's never going to lead you to be greedy or stingy. He's always going to lead you to be a giver. Now, who you give and where you give, you have to be very careful. To whom you give, to where you spend your time, who you give your time to. You know, there are you know, thousands of people literally every week that want to have a phone call with me. How many of you know that it's not humanly possible for me to have an individual phone call with a thousand people a week? Amen? You might not have that much of a demand on you, but you've got a demand on you. You've probably got more of a demand on you than you can, than you can, uh, whoever said, nah, I'm out, you'll be out in just a moment, praise God. We've got to be careful for the trolls contaminating our flow. Amen. You can sow there. You can do that. I want to share with you in just a minute uh, uh, about uh, something I learned from Reese Howells in, a, in his biography, something just an amazing testimony. It's going to inspire faith in you for provision. It's going to inspire faith for you, in you for provision. Some of you need faith for provision. Some of you are struggling. You're like, I can't believe you're taking up an offering on a Periscope and on a Facebook, don't you know I'm struggling? Yes, I know you're struggling. That's why I'm taking up an offering, to give you an opportunity to obey the Holy Spirit if he should tell you to sow. Because he, when you're struggling financially, there's somewhere you're supposed to sow. There's something you're supposed to sow. When I went to Nicaragua for eight years in the summers, they didn't have money, so they brought chickens and eggs and milk. They brought what they had. You always have something to sow. Kenneth Copeland, when he didn't have anything, he was in an Oral Roberts meeting. He had nothing. He had nothing. He had no money at all to sow into the offering. You know what he sowed? He asked somebody for a pencil, and he wrote out a thing, and he, he committed to pray for Oral Roberts faithfully. And he put that note and the pencil into the, into the, you know what he got out of that? He ended up getting a job with Oral Roberts, being Oral Roberts' pilot. And then he started and launched a worldwide ministry out of that because he didn't have anything to sow, but he understood that sowing, so he made a commitment to pray. Some of you, that's all you got. You got your prayers, and those are powerful. But I want to share with you just a moment about a story I read in a book from Reese Howells. It uh, uh, actually was written by Norman Grubb. God is good. 
God is good. What else do I have to share with you today? Oh, uh, shadrakata. I want some volunteers, when I say pithy things by the, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, to send me these quotes to info at jenniferleclair.org. I cannot remember what I say. Literally, like, even after I get off the broadcast, I can't remember some of the really cool things I say, like, you know, getting out of the poison pot and into the well of God. I, I don't remember them many times till I get back into prayer. These are, these are little quotes I need to put out on Instagram or something because they're, they're powerful and they f- inspire faith in people. So if, if, if you hear me say something, now quote me right now, if you hear me say something that, that's like, oh, that was good, you know, then email it to my office at info at jenniferleclair.org. I have a, a girl on my staff that, that makes memes. I just can't get around to, I can't remember the things I say because I'm saying them by the Spirit. Since I'm saying them by the Spirit, many times I literally do not remember them. It's the same way with prophecy. Many times when you prophesy, you don't remember what you prophesied over somebody. And it'll come back to you if you, you know, really pray and ask the Lord sometimes. But how many know I don't have time to sit around and pray about what I said? If you hear me say something cool, please email info at jenniferleclair.org so I can get uh, Jasmine to make these memes for me. And we can get some of these inspirational things out to the body of Christ. Would you help me out with that? I could use your help. Info at jenniferleclair.org. Amen. Blaze leaders, we were not able to record the call. I don't think there were many of you on the call, so you weren't, uh, you, you're not privy to all the exciting changes that we're making. Uh, so you need to email the office and, uh, and, uh, and find out. Amen. We're restructuring the Awakening Blaze movement. Reason why is because, well, there's a few reasons why. I, I checked to see what was going on with other prayer movements and how they structured some things for, for more effectiveness and, and found a few better ways to do things. Um, if, you're part of, if you're an Awakening Blaze leader and we've not heard from you, um, you're about to get deactivated. Um, as soon as I get settled in this new condo, I'm going to have a meeting with Baby Prophet. And if you've not communicated with us, we're removing you and we're going to put someone else in your place that is, uh, that is uh, able to bear the burden. We know we're not, we're no, no condemnation, no guilt, no shame. Uh, but if it's been six months and you're not communicating, uh, you, you are clearly are not, uh, not able at this time in your life uh, to pursue what's on your heart. We understand that. Uh, well, that's why we offer these monthly conference calls to stay in touch. Uh, we, we offer, please email the office, go to, go to awakeningblaze.com, fill out the forms there. I'm not going to answer all these questions on Periscope about where the Blaze leaders are because I cannot speak and read at the same time keep up with that please go to awakeningblaze.com that is where you'll find everything that you need okay uh, there'll be a hopefully there's a map up there now i need to check with my developer that should have been done some time ago that should have been done some time ago uh, let's say stay focused and not start asking questions go to awakeningblaze.com if you have questions there will be uh there's a new paradigm there's a new paradigm of uh, all the way around and this might split the movement in half because it's going to weed out those who are not committed and that is wonderful because we want absolute unity uh, we can't have people that just want a title uh, we can't have people you know the movement that just want to look cool and say well I'm connected with Jennifer and I'm a blaze leader but you know we have only met once in the last six months but I'm a blaze leader I'm not going to have that any longer because it's, it's defiling what God is doing we must have people that are on the same page amen and so it's really exciting there are things that are going to be to your great benefit, uh, even uh, on the financial side, going to be a great benefit to you and a great help and to help you uh, thrust your, uh, your, your ministry. But yeah, if there's the, some, of, some, some in this movement have wrongly aligned just because they, they want all the teachings that I do and they want all the emails that we send out and it's just like they want to be on a list and, and gobble, 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 but they're not doing what they're supposed to do. So we are going to, uh, to, uh, to press those out in love. And so we can have a pure movement. And, and uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm asking you, yeah, just go to awakeningblaze.com. I just can't keep up with your questions and read at the same time. And I, I can't stay, I can't get distracted. Amen. Pray for me today. The, uh, the, the move is today. I've got to be there by nine. The movers have gone, um, uh, have, uh, have, have, uh, supposed to be there at 9 a.m. And so I will, uh, I will, uh, be there to meet them there and get everything over here. Amen. I mentioned the book club yesterday. What else do I have for you? What else do I have for you? Oh, the school of pr- prayer and mentoring and intercession. It's well over halfway full. So if this is something you're wanting to get in on, get in on it. Uh, somebody, uh, it, the details are there on the side, although I know uh, some people like explained verbally. So I'm going to explain this briefly verbally. Uh, and, and go. Please, please do read the, the website, though, before you, before you send our office a, 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 an email asking a question. I ask you 
with all sincerity and politeness of heart in love to read the page because most likely 99% of what you want to know is there on schoolofthespirit.tv and that if you've read that and it's not clear to you or if there's something missing let us know but please actually it take it'll take you two and a half minutes if that to read the page and so what we're doing is we're getting flooded with questions that it's on the page and so that is causing you to feel frustrated because you're delayed in registering because you know the slots are filling up so fast and you know but if you'll just read the page most likely your questions will be answered so my mentoring and prayer and intercession program it is going to be once a month a phone call it's gonna the phone call is gonna be between 90 minutes and two hours okay I'm gonna teach you about the basics of prayer the deeper things of prayer I'm gonna be taking feedback on what to teach but I'm also gonna be led by the Holy Spirit uh, I am going to send out weekly emails, which we've already started for those who are already signed up. I will be doing at least one video teaching in there uh, every week or several shorter tips to inspire you. I'll be praying over you to catch the spirit of prayer. You will be able uh, to join a tier two if you want to go even deeper where you have email access to me to ask questions within reason, not five times a day every day about all your life's drama, but about prayer. Okay, we've got to stay focused. Okay, this is filling up really, really, really fast. If you're not able to make the live call, you will get a link to the replay. So you don't have to feel stressed out or worried uh, about that because you'll still get, and you can listen to it as many times as you want, okay? And it's gonna be on the phone so that we can, we can have more interaction that way. Uh, there'll be Q and A at the end of each, uh, at the end of each, at, at the end of each call. And so, Go to schoolofthespirit.tv. That's your, all that is there. If you're an Ignite member, you will get a discount. I won't broadcast that over the phone because then every person is going to, who is not an Ignite will try to sign up, and we do check. We do check to see if you're an Ignite before releasing that discount. Why? Because that's for people who are an Ignite. It's a benefit. And uh, so I've noticed a lot of people, or a number of people, have been uh, saying they're part of Ignite, and they're not. And so they automatically uh, disqualify themselves from being part of my programs because if you're lying, you're not in. Now, if you thought you were and it was genuinely an, an honest mistake, that's fine. Uh, but, you know, there's some that just you're trying to be sneaky. How many of you know God's not blessing sneaky? God blesses uh, truth in the inward man. So if you're a part of Ignite, uh, you do get a 15% discount. Now, what is Ignite? It's a prophetic network, apostolic prophetic network. Uh, I'm, the, the new site is launching soon. Uh, we are actually, in, in addition to the your, you know, igniting your prophetic voice level, uh, I'm also now offering uh, 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 an alignment uh, for, with, uh, with uh, uh, I'm sorry, my thing here just broke. I'm offering alignments for churches, parachurch ministries, missionaries, uh, Bible training centers, apostolic centers, uh, those that are, they're non-denominational in nature. And you know, how many of you know that when you're non-denominational, sometimes you, you don't have anybody to lean on and you don't have any sort of I don't like the word covering, but for lack of a better word, uh, covering. And so what happens is you're just hanging out there and, uh, loose. And so we're offering that. We're offering uh, ord ordination and commissioning. Uh, we're offering uh, marketplace ministry affiliation. And so we're going to essentially uh, cover the board and offer these, uh, these alignments to people who just have no other options or have uh, grown out of the alignment or who need an additional alignment so that's going to be launching really soon but it's also just for believers believers who want to be in a community of people uh, that's level one uh, just want to be in a community of people who are learning and growing together contending for a pure prophetic flow uh, in Jesus name I don't know any good churches in Jacksonville I'm sorry uh, those aren't the kind of questions I can answer while I'm doing uh, doing these things uh, don't know I cannot I here let me just put it to you this way we can end the question of churches I don't recommend churches the reason why uh, is because I unless I am very intimately involved in that church I will not recommend the church so I cannot recommend any churches and anybody that recommends a church to you on my broadcast that is in no way from me or endorsed by me uh, the problem is is there's a lot of abusive churches out there there's a lot of churches that seem really good on websites and they're not uh, I will not recommend any church there might be two or three I'd recommend that I know them intimately but I will not recommend them so we can we can stop all those questions and it's not that I mind you asking I'm just explaining I won't answer and that's why now 
Yeah, amen, amen. IgniteNow.org if you want to be part of that. SchoolOfTheSpirit.tv. You'll also find the School of the Seers there, the School of the Prophetic, the School of Spiritual Warfare. You know, integrity is very key right now. I'm just really, I'm going to have to teach on that because I'm seeing so much lack of integrity. Amen. Yeah, ask God what church you should go to. That's a good word. Amen. God is good. I looked for a good church for many, many, many years um, and could not find one. Eventually, the Lord had me start one. So who knows? Maybe you're called to start one. Amen. Praise God. I want to share with you this morning about chapter 23 in a book called Reese Howell's Intercessor. And it's called Standing in the Queue. Now, Reese Howells was one of the greatest intercessors ever. He came up in the Welsh revival, and he was heading off to Africa with his wife to be a missionary. And they had actually sacrificed their child, not in a literal sense, but they had given their child, Samuel, to his uncle to raise. The Lord said, give him away like Hannah did Samuel, and so he did that. Uh, He and his wife were were just so distraught about it, but they obeyed the Lord. He had a life surrendered fully to God. Now, he was on his way to Africa. He had to take a train. He had to take a train. So they left for London. They had two pounds. And uh, he lived by this rule called first need, first claim. So he he was going uh, to the post office. Uh, someone needed money, he ran into someone that needed money, and he gave them the money. So all they had left was five shillings, and they had to get all the way uh, to London. And so they didn't have enough money to buy the tickets to London, so they just bought a ticket to the first stop, to a stop along the way. They did not uh, have the money that they needed. Uh, it was a, sort of one of those things that he just went by faith. He, well, God will provide. God had showed him time and time again, time and time again, that he would provide for his needs. But he told him, the money doesn't belong to you. You're not to sp-. God told him, you're not to spend any money unless I lead you. And if someone comes along and they need money first, it's theirs. And so they got on the train, not knowing how they would get all the way to London and make it to Africa. Uh, and, and, and they didn't know what they were going to do. Um, but the time came, they just had to get on that plane, uh, I mean, on that train. And so there were, uh, as he tells the story, there were many people at our home station wishing us all good things. But what we needed was money to go to London. Many also came as far as Landley, singing all the way. They thought, the thought that came to me was, I'd sing better if I had the money. <laughs> He says, we went out to breakfast with some friends in Lanley and then walked back to the station, still not delivered. And now the time for the train had come. The spirit then spoke to me and said, if you had money, what would you do? And Reese Howell said, I'd take my place in the queue at the booking office. And I said, well, and the Lord said, well, are you not preaching that my promises are equal to current coin? You had better take your place in the queue. So there was nothing I could do except obey. And Reese said, there were about a dozen people before me. They were all passing by the booking office one by one. The devil kept telling me, now you only have a few people in front of you. And when your turn comes, you will have to walk through. You will have preached such about Moses with the Red Sea in front and the Egyptians behind, but now you are the one that is shut in. Yes, shut in, I answered. But like Moses, I will be gloriously let out. Now, there's a lesson there. Listen, when the devil talks to you, the Bible says, agree with your adversary quickly when when, when you're on the way. So the devil was telling him, you're shut in now. You're not going to make it now. You're like Moses now. You've got the Egyptian army in front of you, the Red Sea behind you. And Reese says, that's right. I'm shut in, but God's going to deliver me just like Moses. So the enemy used scripture against him. But he turned it around on the devil. Then Reese said this, when we were there, when there were only two before me, a man stepped out of the crowd and said, I'm sorry, I can't wait any longer, but I must open my shop. He said goodbye and put 30 shillings in my hand. It was the most glorious and only a foretaste of what the Lord would do in Africa if we would obey. After I had the tickets, the people who came with us to the train began to give gifts to us, but the Lord had held them back until we had been tested. We were singing all the way to London. 
Now, on their arrival, a man asked them to breakfast the next morning. He then told them he had 50 pounds for them, but he didn't send it in the mail. And Reese told him, thank God you didn't, because I wouldn't have been without that test in the queue for anything. Now, here's the thing. They had everything they needed for Africa except three things, a watch, a fountain pen, and a raincoat each. And they had never mentioned these needs to anyone. But they, when they were at breakfast with this man, whose name was Mr. Head, they, he asked, what kind of watches do you have? And he told them that his son Alfred wanted to give them each a watch. And then he asked them, have you prepared for the rainy season in Africa? Have you got good raincoats? And when Reese told them they didn't have any raincoats, he, he wrote an, down an address on a card and said, go down to the store and, and get yourself raincoats and I'll pay for them. And then the man asked them, do you have any kind of fountain pens? And they said, no. And they said, you've, you've got to have one. And he paid for them to have that raincoat. And so here's the thing. God will always provide your needs, but it's according to the proportion of your faith. Everything is according to the proportion of your faith. And the enemy always wants to tell you that you're down to the wire, that nothing's going to change, that your provision is not available to you. But Reese Howell over and over, Howell was over and over again, over and over and over again, he gave away everything he had and God always came through. Even their son, who they gave away to their uncle when he was just a little boy, when he was just a baby, when they were on the mission field in Africa, his son grew up 18 years old, and he actually went to serve on the mission field with his parents, and it was as if they had never missed a beat. So listen to me. There is nothing that you can give to God, nothing that you can give away for his glory by obedience to his spirit that he will not give back to you. It's a life fully surrendered to God. It's a life that I attain to. I'm not to that degree yet, but I'd like to be. And if you read that book about his life, it's just so inspiring. Listen, whatever needs you have, God intends to meet it. If he tells you to do something, he's going to provide for you the way to do it. Amen? That's what I'm trying to get into your mind, into your heart. You cannot outgive God. Reese Howells was nobody special other than he had a life fully surrendered to God. You know, many times we surrender everything else in our life to God except our money or except whatever it is, the idol that we hold on to. I want to pray for you now. I actually didn't even pray over the offering. That was silly. I forgot. Let me pray over the offering and let me pray over you. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Spirit of God, the anointing to give. I thank you, Lord, for all those who are giving in today's offering, God. I ask you, Lord, to bless it, to bring it back to them in ways they could never even possibly expect or imagine. Bigger ways, big things, dream wild things. I, th I bless and, and, and sanctify this offering for the work of the ministry in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that you help us to live that life totally surrendered to God, totally surrendered to you. Help us, Lord, to surrender with our whole heart, not half-hearted, not three-quarters hearted, not 99% hearted, our whole heart because it belongs to you. Everything we have and everything we are, we are just stewards of it, even our children. Let us take a lesson from Reese Howell's faith to, 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 to act as if he had no money to buy a ticket and he stood in line anyway, believing that by the time he got to the front of the queue, the front of the line, that you would provide miraculously, and you did, and then some. So we thank you, Lord, that you're a God of, 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 of miracles. You're a God that can, that can come in just in the nick of time. And we don't like the